Hello, you beautiful people out there. What is going on? This is your friend Birdie coming at you fast with another Genesis video. And today we are going to be talking about a general carry build. Just how do you build as a carry in the game Genesis? What you should look out for, what you should think about when you're creating your build, so on and so forth. There's no one build that's just going to be the best build for each and every single carry. This is kind of just how to know what to build because a lot of people have been asking me like how do you know which specific item to build in which situation and why are you building it and all that stuff and i think this is going to be a really really good build guide video for beginners and i think my cat agrees as well if you guys can hear him meowing in the background as he always does now in this gameplay i'm using cat x and I believe that she is a very, very good carry, but Apollo, in my opinion, is the easiest carry to use for beginners. So if you are just starting off in the game and you don't know which character to use, I think Apollo is the most beginner-friendly character in the game, and it's very easy to use as well. Now, number one thing about getting be, you being a carry is that you're going to carry your team in damage. So the primary focus of your build should always be damage. You should always go as much damage as possible, but you also have some other stats like lifesteal, crit chance, attack speed that will modify how you do that damage. You're going for very high DPS, as high DPS as possible, but at the same time, you want to coordinate that DPS with your own kit, with your abilities. For example, Apollo has a passive where he has a chance to stun the enemy for like a microsecond, just basically interrupt them, right? But if you build attack speed into that, then you have a higher chance of stunning them because, well, you're shooting more often, you're shooting faster. So obviously you're going to have higher chance to stun them because more of those arrows are connecting. So maybe you should go attack speed over power on Apollo for one of your items instead of just doing raw power like you'll see me do here with Cat. As for boots, I think magenta treads are the best. They give you plus 20 damage, plus 30% attack speed, and then they give you the movement speed bonus of plus 80, which is pretty standard. If you want to get fancy, you can use quantum jumper if you want to engage or disengage. Just remember that if you receive damage uh, while you have quantum jumper already built, it'll take you three seconds before you can use that teleport ability to launch yourself forward 900 units or backwards if you're trying to run away. So keep that in mind. I prefer using magenta tread simply because it gives me attack damage and attack speed right off the bat. Now, let me make a correction right now because in one of my previous videos when I was met talking about the item, the eclipse, and I was talking about the plus 75% true strike, I said that, that was true damage. That is false. What True Strike really is, is a counter to dodge chance. So for example, example, I don't know why I'm having so much difficulty talking today, guys. I'm sorry. But for example, Nameless has a passive that increases his dodge chance, which means that basic attacks have a chance to not do any damage on him. They have a chance to quote unquote miss. Scion also has an ability like this, and there's an item in the game called Admiral's Pride that increases your dodge chance by 35%. So that's what the passive on the Eclipse does. You'll see me build it first nonetheless, simply because it gives the most damage out of any other item in the game. And for Cat, because she has a passive that passively increases her attack speed during combat, I'm not really worried about building attack speed items on her. So I'm just going to st stack and focus damage on her as much as I can. But if you do know most... If you do notice that there is a Nameless on the other team, then make sure you build the Eclipse because that is a very good counter to Nameless if you are a carry. That's one thing about builds, guys. You also have to counter. You have to look at what the enemy team composition is. Familiarize yourselves with their abilities. Know what they can do so you know how to counter them. Also know that the items that they're building, when you pull up the scoreboard, you can see those. So if you pull up the scoreboard and you see the icon for Admiral's Pride anywhere in that roster, you're probably going to want to build the Eclipse at some point if you do not do that right off the bat. So the Eclipse is a very, very good item to build as well. You're going to notice me build Atomic Booster, my next item on Cat X, because every time I use an ability, it gives me bonus damage on my next auto attack. And because Cat X is constantly using her abilities in between boxing and fighting other champions, it's turns out to be a really, really big boost to my DPS. Remember, above all else, carries need to maximize their DPS. Don't worry too much about building armor unless there's a ton of CC on the other team and you want to build Medusa's shield so that you don't get stun locked for centuries. Because if you do get stun locked as a carry, that's an instant death. And the reason why is because if you build crit chance and lifesteal, which you know, are both perks when 
you hit them with your basic attack that get activated if you can't hit them with your basic attacks because you're stun locked forever then there's no point in building those items so prioritize accordingly but in general here is the equation first item after building boots should either be damage or attack speed or both for example rift claymore is a great one to build on Apollo because it gives you a 10% chance to stun every time you connect with your auto attack. It also gives you bonus attack damage and attack speed and match that with Apollo's passive where he already interrupts anyway. You just add to that stun potential and lock down a potential with Apollo. So Rift Claymore is a good example, good item to build. The Eclipse is a good item to build for raw power, especially if there's a Nameless or a Scion on the other team or if they're building Admiral's Pride. So the first item should be damage or attack speed. The second item should either be damage and crit chance. For example, like Plasma Blaster is a very, very, very good item. Gives you plus 80 damage, plus 20% crit chance, and it makes your crits go on a multiplier of 1.5 times. So you do 50% more damage with your crits. And getting crits with a carry is probably the best way to do a ridiculous amount of damage. But it is also up to chance, right? It's a 20% chance. So if you mix that with attack speed, which is why you build that first, then you're going to have a higher chance to crit. Because if you build your crit chance item first, you're not going to have as much power to multiply as if you were to go with damage first and attack speed first. So your DPS is, at a base level is already high, and then that crit chance is just icing on the cake. Now, you want to go a lifesteal item, like Crimson Mask, for example. You want to go either third or fourth item, depending on the situ situation. If you're really far ahead, if you notice that you just don't need to heal up too often, if you're securing a lot of kills like I am in this game, then you don't really need to prioritize lifesteal too much. You could just keep snowballing and rolling them with your damage, with your attack speed, with your crit chance, if you'd like. Uh, notice I haven't even built my second damage item yet, and I already have 15 kills, so you can keep steamrolling them. But Lifesteal is a perk that is very, very useful on carries late game, but it is a quality of life perk as well. It's a quality of life stat. It's not going to be the most important thing in your build, at least early on, because you still need to build damage and DPS. So you can clear camps quickly, so you can farm quickly, so you can come in in the back line and melt the enemy team because even if you do build lifesteal first because you think that you're going to survive off of it if you're not doing much damage in the first place you're not going to be stealing much life because it's a percentage of the damage that you deal so that's why you need to build up that dps pool of yours first and then you can go into stuff like crit chance and lifesteal that is why you go into those items later so let's say we have this build where your first item is raw attack damage like the eclipse your second item can be attack speed and damage, like Rift Claymore. Your third item can be crit chance, so Plasma Blaster. And then your fourth item is your, you know, Crimson Mask or your Devils, right? It's for that lifesteal. Now that leaves you with your fifth and final item. Remember, we're not counting the boots as part of our items. And I don't know what my cat is doing right now, but he is being a giant bozo running into my stuff. So I apologize if you guys hear some thuds. But for the last item, like I said, you might want to build Medusa's Shield because that does give you a little bit of power as well. Uh, it's also just another quality of life thing so you don't get stunned up the wazoo. You could also use Encapsulator instead. When you activate that, you become invulnerable for 2.5 seconds so that the enemy cannot target you, but you also can't target them. But this can be very useful in a team fight to get the enemy off of your back. I wouldn't really recommend this because it gives you energy stats and carry scale off of physical damage, but who knows, maybe as a Skelter you want to have a little bit more energy in your pocket so you can use more your abilities more often and that might be useful for you, but I've noticed that Medusa's shield gets the job done pretty well. Now another thing you could do is you could stack two items together. Okay, you can use Crimson Mask, you could also use Devil's Mutation, you could use both of those at the same time because Devil's Mutation has an active that increases your attack speed. So if instead of building Rift Claymore, just the passive attack speed bonus, you want to have that active instead and also be getting a percent lifesteal out of it, 
then you can go with that as well. It all depends on your play style. I think Crimson Mask is the best item in terms of just raw lifesteal because when you pop the active, you get 150% lifesteal bonus for, what, 8 seconds, which is a ridiculous amount of time. You basically get all your health back anytime you want, basically. Or you can go for Devil's Mutation and just increase your DPS and have a, a little bit of lifesteal so that when you're farming in lane or farming jungle camps, you just slowly get your health back so you don't have to back. That could be a useful thing to get as well for your second item after your damage item if that's something you want to do. If that's just up to your playstyle. Like I said, guys, there are a lot of variations and this is a very, very general guide as to kind of what you should look for as a carry and what you should do as a carry. Open up the scoreboard once in a while, check what the other team is building, understand the enemy team composition, understand their strengths and their abilities and their weaknesses and their abilities, and then counter build accordingly. For the most part, you can never go wrong with damage on a carry. Okay, when in doubt, you can build more damage, it's okay. But don't forget that you can take way more advantage of damage in team fights if you read the passive abilities and the active abilities on a lot of these items, which I recommend just going into a bot game, opening up the store, and just familiarizing yourselves with these items and their trees and the way they go. You might not want to start off with the most expensive item on the list. So you might not want to start off with the Eclipse unless you're really far ahead, really fast, really fed, really fast. Uh, but... You know, you might want to start off with something a little bit cheaper. Rift Claymore is a little bit cheaper. Atomic Booster is a little bit cheaper. Those are a couple examples there. So I hope this kind of clears stuff up for some beginners when it comes to carries in this game. Remember, as a carry, you are going to be squishy, but you're also going to be dealing the most damage on your team as that backliner shooting everybody else who comes inside your range. Just don't poke yourself out. Keep yourself safe. Know when you can engage, when you can't. Wait for that lifesteal item, and when you build that, you're pretty much good to go at that point. It's like completing a puzzle. When you have all the jigsaw pieces alone, it's not much. But when you complete the puzzle all the way, you win the game. So if you get all four of those first items and then that fifth final luxury item, it's pretty much GG. No re. GG's only. Easy claps. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, make sure I have a wonderful day.